today um, because I want to just go real slow and make sure you understand and get all the pieces. Um, so check in. How's everyone doing? Is everyone working? You know, February is behind us. It's gone. It no longer exists. So we're in March and we're, we're already um, into March 3rd. So this month is moving pretty fast and we're looking to submit um on the 14th of next month so we have about 30 days plus a couple of weeks so um i hope everybody or everyone is working um and getting this done um you get this done you get this monkey off your back all right um so brendan i'll give you a few seconds and then we're going to roll around the room brendan what's up yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm making progress. I'm doing my step two clips and I think like, you know, I'm making progress. Like I've had a successful week so far and, you know, like okay. everything's going well. That's very good. I'm really happy to hear that. Congratulations. Keep moving forward. Thank you, brother. Anyone else? Any comments? Any thoughts? No? Man. All right, so I'm not gonna prolong this. I'm just gonna keep moving forward. Um, any questions or concerns or issues or anything regarding step three? That was, you know, I think step three, I, I would be inclined to believe that the uh, little rehearsal or the discussion we had on step three, I, I thought it went well, um, I thought, we had some nice dialogue and discussion. How's everyone doing? If you didn't want to talk to me, just give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down or marginal, please. Okay, cool. For those of you who did respond, thank you. That makes me feel like, you know, okay, there you go. Thanks page two. All right, so um, I'm trying to do this, this assessment check-in. Um, and I'm going to assume that no one is interested in having any recap on step three. Um, how many of you are actually working step three? Put in some elbow into it. <laughs> Hi, uh, Clinton, I do have a quick question. It's Michelle. Oh, cool, Michelle. How are you today? Hi, good. So I was um, outlining the video process slash lessons with my MT. Um, and I just wanted to, and maybe, you know, this is redundant, but I just wanted to get some clarity on student self-assessment. Um, I'm clear on summative assessment, but it, could you give me some examples of student self-assessment, excuse me, versus um, a simple formative assessment? Okay, because you know you, you're talking, you're using, you know, you're saying formative assessment, and we're not, you know, we're not doing a formative assessment. I want to stay focused on the exact language that's in the Cal um, TPA, and the assessments that we're doing is an informal assessment, a formal assessment, and a student self-assessment. And on that self-assessment you are going to, the informal assessment is going to happen in the classroom while you're engaging with the student. That's your informal assessment. How are you doing? How's everything going? So on and so forth. With your formal assessment, you are going to build a formal assessment and a rubric that goes along with that formal assessment. You are also going to build a student self-assessment that your students can interact and engage in. And you're going to build a rubric that goes along with that as well. A, self a, a student self-assessment is where you, I mean, you, 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 I think you do this all the time when you're engaging as an instructor, you're going to have them check on themselves to see where their learning is and where their growth is. That's what a self-assessment is. D does that? Oh. So I completely understand the formal assessment is what I would call a summative assessment and, and the rubric and all of that. 
informal, I understand now. The student self-assessment, could the student be self-assessing with the same rubric that I will then later use to formally assess them? In no. other words, no. no. You're, no. The, you're, the, you're, the, you're the teacher. You're running that classroom. You're the person in charge. Now you're going to do a formal assessment so you can see where your students are. And, and that's the big kahuna. That's the big deal. And, and, and don't get me wrong, Michelle, I, I want you to know I'm with you, but I don't wanna use summative, I don't wanna use those words because the TPA is talking about informal, formal, and self-assessment. And we need to stick with that language and we need to use that in order to do, uh, in order to build our evidence, okay? Uh, right, so just to be clear, if I, so this is a no, so I, I was thinking of having students use the rubric for their essay to self-assess first, then get feedback from peers, write the essay, I mean, sorry, on a draft, they would self-assess their draft, revise, and then I would assess them using that same rubric. That's not okay? Okay, I'm going to repeat this again. You must, you must build two assessments, a formal assessment, and you must also build a student self-assessment so that they can assess themselves. And for each one of those, you must build a rubric. I and see. Gonna, okay. And you're going to have to drop those things at, into, you have to load those, those documents into the system when you get ready to, to load right. and, and submit so, your evidence. So in answering your question, Michelle, mm -hmm. no, you can't do what, what you want to do and what you described. You're going to have to build a formal assessment, a rubric, mm -hmm. and then also build a student self-assessment and a rubric. Those things are separate, okay? Don't try to weave them together. Could you, and uh, I think I understand now, but could you okay. give me an example of the difference between, so what would a student self-assessment be for an essay, okay. here's, for example? Here's, here's what I'm going to do with you, Michelle. We're going to go offline with this, okay? Okay. So after class, why don't you hang around and I'll walk you through it, okay? Okay. Sounds right. good. And thanks for your voice. I appreciate it, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Brother Carlito. Uh, so I noticed that on step three, I'm supposed to give three responses, um, one that exceeds the learning goals, one that meets them, and then one that um, did not meet the learning goals. Correct. What if on the student, what if on one of the assessments in the space, like when it came to, when it comes to the assessment themselves, what if they all met the learning goals and it didn't have a single student not meet them? Uh, how would I, how would I go about that? You, you, can, you can talk about that, but I think that logically, I, I think you're going to have to look for what CTC asked you to look for. Go through their work really deep. Go, go deep and take a look. And if you happen to get everybody exceeded, um, maybe, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything about that. I, I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm really pushing you to do what CTC asks you to do so that you pass this assessment. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Th thank you, brother Carlos, for that question. I appreciate your voice. Any, anyone else? <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna move on to step four. And before I move on to step four, here's my truth. On step one, step two, and step three, do not do what you want to do. I've been talking a lot with students, like one-on-one -on -one, over the phone and texting in the morning and what have you. Hey man, hey lady, you have to do what CTC asked you to do. Do not do anything different. 
do not alter or shift it because you think that's a better way to approach it. Do exactly what they ask you to do. When we've been working together, we've been following the book. If you want to, at the end of the day, all you want to do is pass. You want to come out at a level three, you want to get the proper amount of points, and you want this behind you. Follow the rules. Do not do anything different. There are a few people here who tell you they've done things different and they're back to another $150 and they're back resubmitting and cleaning up and doing what they should have done the first time. All right. This, this is a very important message that you have to bite into and, and, and say, okay, I get it. And if you feel like you, it's, this is twisted and, you, and you're not getting it, come, come to me and let's talk it out a little bit. After we finish the step four, some of you are probably wondering, someone asked, hey, what we're going to do when we finish step four? You know, hey, man, we're going to go back to step one again. That, hey, that's what we're going to do. We're gonna go back to step one, we're gonna bite into this again, and we're gonna get real you know, personal and what have you. If we were in a classroom together, I'd be breaking you into groups and you'd be teaching and sharing and helping and supporting each other. When we do have the formal class, then that's what's gonna start happening. Anyway, I'll start with all my um, pontificating and then I'll go right into step four. All right, so step four, we're going to start where we always start. We're going to start with the essential question in the rubric. And my rubric for step four, it shows, because I, I move my book around a lot, but it shows that it's page 42. And if it's not 42, check 43, check 40, you know, four but that's where we're starting, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly read the essential question, try to explain it out a bit, and then I'm gonna read on level three, all right? So the essential question for step four is, how does the candidate use, and that's a key word there, use that then the analysis of results from informal assessment, student self-assessment, and formal assessment to plan and teach a follow-up learning activity that provide a, rash, a rationale for the activity choice citing evidence. I, I'm gonna read that again and I'm gonna add a few words into it. How does the candidate use the analysis of results from the informal assessment, the student self-assessment, and the formal assessment to plan and teach a follow-up learning activity and provide a rationale for the activity choice citing evidence, okay? And let me ask you, where is your evidence going to come from? Where do you think the evidence is going to come from? From the rubric grades, from the grades. So yeah, it's going to come from the, the 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 formal assessment, the student assessment, and and how you conducted the uh, so the, the how you conducted the informal assessment, the self assessment, and the uh, formal assessment. Those rubrics and, and those results are going to help you really make sense of planning another lesson. Okay. All right. Thanks, Moises. So let's read at level three. Let's see what a level three gets you. 
And this is very important that we pay attention to what they're asking for and we respond accordingly. Level three, candidate applies what was learned from an analysis of results from informal assessment, student self-assessment, self and formal assessment to plan and teach a content-specific follow-up activity. So that means when we talk about content specific, you're gonna be hitting one tight note and that's how you're gonna follow up, okay? It's gonna be either if reteach, the candidate provides instruction in a new way to support students to meet content specific learning goals and ELD goals if appropriate or activity or whatever, okay? Or if providing an extension activity, the activity depends and advances students learning, okay? So if you do an activity, that activity is going to provide an extension activity uh, that helps advance the student's learning. So they're basically saying you can do <clears throat> a reteach or an activity, an appropriate of activity. Okay. Next and last part. Candidate provides a clear rationale for the activity choice based on analysis of student responses and reassessment results and cites evidence from student responses and assessment results that supports their choice of the follow-up activity. So basically, you know, and, and before I say this, what, what do you think this is saying basically? What, what's the nutshell in level three? Uh, Quint, is it saying pretty much like from the data you get from your initial assignment, you change up to respond to the next, uh, in the next one? Yeah, but, but they're saying the, re the information that you get from the assessments, okay, from the assessments that the students were involved in, that's where your change up comes from. Because that's the evidence that says, wow, I need to redo this. Or, wow, I need to put together different. That evidence. So they're asking you to speak to the um, informal assessment the formal assessment and speak to the student self-assessment. They're asking you to use that to determine what you do next. All right, folks? Does, does, this, does this make sense? Should I read this level three again? I think it makes sense. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this level three information and we're going to continue to chop it up the way we've been doing from the very start. So we're not done with it. We're going to come back at it again. Now, I'd like you to swing over to page 28. It might be for you 30 or 27 or 26. But I'm on, um, th th what's on this page at the very top, it reads annotation title. But what we're concerned with is what's at the bottom of the page, the evidence to be submitted. When we talk about step four, what I'm going to read is what CTC wants 
from you. Nothing different. This is what they want. It's going to be a part K and part L of the total assessment. So part K, they want a written narrative. And the written narrative is going to be about next steps for learning and reteaching or extension activity. Now, that means you can do a reteach or you can do an extension activity description. You can do either one of these two. You can do a written narrative, the next steps for learning and reteaching or an extension activity description. And I'll skip this one thing right here. Now, the description for a whole class or a group of students. So you can do a reteach for the whole class or a group of students because those students didn't get it. You look through their assessment, you look through the formal assessment, you think, dang, this little group here, they didn't get it. They didn't connect. There, there, was, there was something that was wrong. Or you can do a reteach and an extension activity description for the entire class. Because you're gonna say, dang, the whole class just, this, they didn't get the learning goals. It didn't work. Something was, something was amiss here. So you have a choice. You can do um, a learning and reteach or an extension activity description for the whole class or a group of students. And this can't be any more than seven pages, okay? And if you do that activity, you're gonna, ex you're gonna describe it out, like, totally explain it, every aspect of it, lay it out. So when the reader reads it, they can say, oh, this is the activity. And it has to connect with everything. It can't be something that's just out of the blue. There has to connect. Everything we're doing here, step one, two, three, and four, they're all intertwined, okay? So that's what's gonna happen in part K. You're gonna be writing. Part L, you're gonna do an annotated video clip that's again, no more than five minutes. That means you can go under five minutes, but you can't go a penny over five minutes. So an annotated video clip of follow-up instructions for the reteaching or extension activity. So basically your five minutes is going to be explaining to the students to the whole class or that group of students, you're gonna be explaining the reteaching or the extension activity. And that's what that five minute video is all about. And for this five minute video, there is an annotation to choose from and we'll come around to that. Now, before I go any further, are there any questions in terms of what you're going to be submitting in part K or in part L? And I'll just be quiet for a minute. Just to clarify, Quentin. Okay, Mel says, hold, hold on, Daddy-O. Give me, give me two seconds here, okay? Got it. I'm, I'm going to shoot with Kyle because 
he, unlike you, oh my bad, <laughs> he raised his hand. No, oh I'm just, God. I'm just messing with you, brother, because you know you're my boy. All right, I got you. <laughs> okay, uh, Kyle, talk to me. Okay, so Clinton, if I'm following you correctly, this is the part of the um, TPA where before it's basically like the cycle one with three videos, but this one is a fourth video with uh, with annotation. It sort of feels like an add-on to it, sort of. What's your question? Oh, oh no, just uh, just um, <clears throat> th this part of the uh, the TPA mm -hmm. is either just expanding upon what you already taught, or it's reteaching it. But it doesn't have to be the whole class. It can just be a certain group of students, like a small group. Yes, it can be a small group. Now, if you do do, a, and thank you for your voice, Kyle, if you do do a small group, be, justify why you pick that small group. Why this group? What about their formal and self-assessment? And what about you engaging with them with informal assessment made you center in on them? Why do they need a reteach? Or why do they need an extension activity? And how is either one of those two things going to help them, support them, and really move them forward? Okay, brother? Okay, thank you for your voice. Moises, talk to me. So this is going to be in addition to the three videos we already have. Okay, here's one thing I want you to do. And this is one thing I want from everyone. You know, I'll say it this way. When I used to do, when I was working on my dissertation, we had chapter one, two, three, and four. When I finished chapter one, I closed it and I put it away. I put it in a drawer, closed the drawer. And then I started working on chapter two, okay? Now, it was all connected and relative, but I don't want you to keep going back and saying, oh, okay, so now we have three videos and now we're the fourth. I want you to think now you're on step four. You've completed the three videos. Now you're doing one more video. And it, you're not gonna use the annotations from video three. There are two annotations here that you're going to use. So it's just going to be a fourth video, not connected to the videos with three. And I know that's not what you asked, Moises, but you kind of led me down that path. I'll talk to you. That makes sense. So I right, just, just <laughs> do it. Shut it up. Shut up and just get all this stuff done. Man, TPAs are, are a mug, dude. They're, they're, they're a mess. They're a muscle. All right. You're, you're good, Moises. Thank you for your voice. Are there any other questions before we proceed further? No, I'm gonna switch over to page two and see page three. So I don't see any hands. So I'm assuming everyone is, is getting this. Um, and, I, and I hope you are. And I hope at this point or this stage in the game, everyone feels comfortable enough with me to ask questions. I mean, I hope that you think that like, Clinton's all right. I can ask him a question. He's not gonna like put me off or make me feel bad. Um, so please ask questions. There are no crazy questions. Every question is on point. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to page 25. And Kyle, put your hand down, brother. I'm going to go to page 25. And at the top of this page, it reads, step four, apply. All right. And, and I can really, I'm going to really be very conscious about slowing this down and making sure that you get it. So I'm not concerned with rushing through these three, these four pages. I'm only concerned about you saying, hmm, I, I get it. That makes sense to me. And so throughout this, I'm going to continue continually do an informal assessment to make sure that we're all together as a family, all right? 
Okay, Quentin, that's great. Oh, thank you. Who said that? No. All right. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> so here we are. Step four, apply number one, next steps for learning. Now, I, I read over this and read over this, and I, and I need to go over this with you, and then I'll continue to try to break it down, okay? So it reads, based on your summary and analysis of student learning from the informal assessment, the student self-assessment, and the formal assessment and evidence from the learning segment videos clips of teaching practice. Think about what you learned about student progress towards meeting the learning goals. Now, here's the deal. I was hoping that somebody would say, hey, Quentin, I don't get this. What do you mean with the informal assessment? Because the informal assessment is something that's just kind of like happening. So how do I, Quentin, how do I go back and, 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 and get summary and analysis from my informal assessment? How do you do that? Because let me tell you, when you start to write this up, when you submit your evidence, you're going to need to speak to the informal assessment as well as the formal assessment and the student self-assessment. Now, the, in, the formal assessment is going to be easy because you'll have it in front of you. The student self-assessment is easy because you'll have it in front of you. How do you engage or intertwine the informal assessment into this discussion? Does anybody, does anyone have any ideas on how you might do that? Because you need, you need to make sure you do it because here they're asking you based on your summary and analysis of student learning from the informal assessment student self-assessment, formal assessment, and evidence from the learning segment video clips of teaching practices. Think about what you learn about student progress towards meeting the learning goals. Then respond to the following prompts using the Part K written narrative. So can anyone answer my question. How are you going to blend your informal assessment into this? I don't want any of you to write those seven pages and not speak to your informal assessment. Can anyone tell me how you might do that? Selena, and then I'll go with um, uh, Danielle. Okay. Thanks, Danielle. Uh, Selene, talk to me. So maybe our informal assessment can be something that, as we do throughout the class to see, not only if they're with us, like um, they're following, but we check up on minor things. So to see how they're doing with the minor things, we can apply it to um, more major things like our formal or, um, yeah, formal assessment. Would that make sense? So it's like kind of like the brickwork before the other assessments. So... I, I want you to know, I hear you. So let me try to tell you how, so you're going to be saying something like, doing my formal assessment, I constantly ask the students if they were getting the material, if they understand the, the musical notes, if they understood the math. And um, during that process, a number of students seemed confused, glazed over their eyes. So that let me know that they weren't getting it. So a number of times I had to go backwards. Is that how you're speaking, Celine? Selena? Yes, exactly. Thank you. You're able to articulate it a lot better. <laughs> and that's exactly what you should be doing, Selena. Beautiful. And thank you for your voice. Danielle, talk to me. How are you today? I'm doing okay. Um, okay. 
going on the informal assessment, if you, with the formal and the student self-assessment, it's really easy because, yeah, you have a hard copy in front of you. Right. But because we had to do one of the uh, video clips on informal assessment only, I would probably also rewatch my video clip, but also look back at the annotations and see how did that fit with my lesson as a whole, okay. but also what specific things did I already do, and then reintroduce that and connect it back to to extending my my lesson. Very good. Very good. That, that's that's cool. And just totally refer, refer, refer. Cite the video. Cite the annotations. Refer back to that stuff and bring it back and pull it in. The bottom line is, and thank you, Danielle, for your voice. That was very good. The bottom line is you must talk about the informal assessment the student self-assessment and the formal assessment. Do not leave one out. Brother Sam, how are you? Hi, it's really tired, uh, burnt out. Just, there's no chill in my life. <laughs> there's this no too, chill this, in my this, life. This too shall pass. Talk to me, brother. Uh, so from what I'm getting at, well, I'm, I don't have the um, actual, what's it called? actual document open right now i'm not in a position where i can do that so according to the conversation i'm hearing there seems to be uh there seems to be four videos and three assessments uh, am i right at the end of the day in step two there are going to be four videos correct and three forms of assessments meaning student self-assessment for informal assessment and a formal assessment right Correct. Okay, so um, I know informal assessment is just something like, hey, you played this note correctly, good job, or, oh, that didn't work out. And formal is probably like a rubric or something. So student self-assessment, is that kind of a rubric thing also, or am I like not understanding this at all? Um, you're standing in the field, but you haven't joined the group. How about that? So it's not like you're not getting it. Um, and you know what? Uh -huh. here's, what I'm, here's what I'm thinking, Brother Sam. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I'd be happy to do a little tutorial session with you to really help you. Yeah, this. Yeah. But, but if you do, brother, you're going to have to have your, your book in front of you. You're going to have to have it open and you're going to have to engage. I mean, I know this is tough for everybody. It, and everybody's busy and everybody's heaped steep into this. But, you know, we, we got to get through this because our life is woven into this. Okay. So why don't, you know, I'd be happy to work with you like on a Saturday or Sunday, brother. But right now yeah. I can't, I can't step 20 paces back and then try to come back up to where we are right now. Okay. Okay. Sorry. It's just. No, 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 no. Don't uh, be sorry. You have my number. Uh -huh. You have my text. Hit me up with a text and dude, I'll set up a Zoom with you. Okay. And then anybody else who wants to join, I'll be happy to, you know, weave us all into that. Okay. Yeah, thank you. It's just like, um, usually whenever this class happens, it's at a very inconvenient time. Okay, okay. Uh, I, listen, so listen, yeah. listen. I, I got you, brother. And uh, life is inconvenient, you know? So here we are. But I'm with you, Sam. Okay. Hit me up and let's All build. Right. let's build together, okay? All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. All right, folks, I'm going to keep moving forward. Um, I would just use the criteria. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to... Pick this up again, and then I'm going to move down to number one. Based on your summary and analysis of student learning from the informal assessment, the student self-assessment, and the formal assessment, and evidence from the learning segment video clips of teaching practice, Think about what you learned about student progress towards meeting the learning goals. Then respond to the following prompts using the, K, the part K written narrative, next steps for learning and reteaching or extension activity description template provided. Cite the video clips and or 
three student assessment responses with feedback met, uh, you know, exceeded, met, or not yet met goals or highest average or above platforms to support your written narrative. So what they're telling you here, use everything you have. Those three students who met, exceeded, or um, didn't meet, use the videos, use everything to support your written narrative. And then I'll speak to Nina, and then I'll start reading these one, A, B, and C. Nina, how are you today? I was tired, but how are you? I'm well, thank you for asking. Talk to me. Um, I was just thinking, so for the lessons, so it was a five lesson plan and for music, five lessons is not really enough to really teach a piece. Okay. Um, do you think it would be okay to at this point have the reteaching be okay we got all the notes and rhythms but let's now add expressiveness do you think that would be a decent yeah absolutely okay so we could kind of say okay within the five lessons it was not possible to teach all the piece so now we would continue and and and, and also you need to you can't just say that on your own there has to be some support Mm -hmm. um, in, in all of those, those assessments to, to have to take you there. Yeah, you, can, you, can, you can say the students did great and now it's time for the, you know, so what you're talking about is excellent. And that could be, it could be again, either uh, an extension activity or it can be uh, um, um, a read, it, it can be a re-teach or an extension activity. Either one of those two, and what you talked about would definitely work, Nina. Would Ab that video, because it has to be five minutes, would that include us explaining that word? In the five-minute video, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be explaining, okay, uh, for follow-up. You're going to be giving follow-up instructions, mm -hmm. okay, for either the reteaching or the extension activity. That's what that video is all about. Okay, awesome, thank you. You're, okay, thank you, Nina, for your voice. Okay, so let's move on to think number one. Think about your teaching practices during the learning segment and summarize what you learned from your analysis of multiple types of assessments about your students. Understanding of the content specific learning goals and ELD goals, if appropriate. Number A, what was most effective about your teaching and assessments in helping students achieve the learning goals of the, uh, of, the, of the segment. B, what was least effective about your teaching and assessment? And hey, when they talk about what was least effective, they want you to be critical. They want you to analyze yourself. They want that. And C, what goal do you want to set as an area for growth to increase your effectiveness as a teacher? Explain why you have chosen this professional learning goal. So when, when, you, when, you, when you start doing this, you know, provide the feedback of what you asked your students to do. Address what worked. Address what did not work. Talk about the good as well as the bad, okay? Because this step here is all about, hmm, how, you know, what, what, what occurred? What happened? I'm just taking everything into consideration now and you're analyzing it. 
and then you're coming up with a reteach or an activity description. So I'm gonna stop for a minute before I go to two, which is follow-up instructions, reteaching or extension activity and ask if there are any questions. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to keep moving forward. So how, how are we doing folks? Is, is this working for you? Am I going too slow? Um, am I not taking a big enough chunk of a bite for you? Um, can I get, you know, are we okay? It's like, ah, or ah. how are you doing folks? Give me something to work with. This is a, this is my informal assessment. <laughs> There's my man, Orlando. Okay. All right. Good job, folks. Let's keep moving forward. Thank you, Kimberly. So I asked you a question after class. Oh yeah, definitely brother. Sir Ten Lee. So Number two, follow-up instruction, reteaching, or extension activity. So I wanna really drill this into you. You're gonna either do a reteaching or an extension activity dis uh, description, okay? So based on your analysis of assessment results from step two and three, informal, student self, and formal, identify what type of specific follow-up activity is the appropriate next step for learning for the whole class or a group of students. And I, I wanna keep banging this home to you. You can find, you can narrow this down to a group of students or you can just make it the whole class. If you're doing the music thing, uh, Nina, um, and you found a Nicholas or you found out that just a few students didn't get it, that's your group of students that you're doing that reteaching or extension activity description for, okay? You can do it for your whole class, or you can narrow it down to just a few students who just didn't seem to connect. Okay? Nina, is your hand up? Yes, a follow-up question for that. So I'm getting a little caught up on how to decide if it's a, because we'll have to name it, of course, so that they see, okay, this is a specific reteaching or extension, but how do I, so for example, the student self-identified in their self-assessment that they need more work on the words. Mm -hmm. So I would teach the whole class, I know that, but would I in that aspect, because one of my goals was to have good diction, good mm -hmm. words, if I'm looking back at that, would that be a reteaching or an extension by the definition of this? Um, I don't know, we need to have more conversation around that. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't answer that just, you know, I mean, I would need you to say, talk to me again on that, explain it out. Um, so a reteaching, let, let, let's see, let's go here and let's go to the breakdown of, of what a reteaching is. And then let's go to a breakdown of what an extension is, okay? How about that? And that, that'll really start to answer your question. So looking at uh, page 25, down to bottom, number two, follow-up instructions, reteaching or extension activity, a reteaching for those, it's for those students who did not meet the content specific learning goals, the ELD goals, if appropriate, then you implement a new approach to instruction to support their continued process. So if you're doing a reteach, then you're making it very clear that these students did not meet the content specific learning goals. They just missed the boat altogether. And then when you do a reteach, 
then now you're reteaching in a different way so that they now can get the content specific learning goals. You all know what a reteach is. So, 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 so that's it. That, that should answer your question, Nina. That means that you, you put together this musical thing and they just didn't get it. You're like, oh man. So now you have to do a reteach for the whole class or maybe a few students got it, but a group of students just didn't get it. They just didn't pick it up and it didn't work for them. So now you do a reteach, okay? And just as easily, I could say instead of, okay, not a few students didn't get it, I can say the whole class as a whole did not meet all the learning goals, right? I could just say, okay, we had four goals and we did not meet this one. So this is what we'll reteach. Exactly. Very good. And what, and yes, that you can do that. And whatever you need, you do, when you do the reteach, it has to be a new approach. You can't get that same meatloaf out and serve it again. All right. It's got to be a new approach. It's okay. So try some, you know, you all know what that's all about. A new approach. Very good. So let's go down to B, which is the extension. So you can do a reteach or an extension. Now, extension is if students met or exceeded the content specific learning goals and ELD goals, if appropriate, implement instruction to build on and or extend what your students were able to demonstrate during the learning segment. So now they're asking you, go deeper. Okay? So that means going beyond whatever you were with the learning segment. Take them a little deeper now because, you know, they, they got it you know, but keep it based on, um, on, 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 on what they learned and now you're expanding on it, okay? I'm gonna stop and ask, are there any questions on the reteach or extension? And now going back to um, part K, on your written narrative, under next steps, it reads, next steps for learning and reteaching or extension activity description. That means on your extension activity, on your extension, you're gonna be describing that activity, okay? Okay, just, I, mean, I just wanna keep bringing that home and making sure that you're saying, okay, I get it. You can do reteach or extension. Either one of the two, you can do it for the whole class or you can find a group of students who just didn't get it, all right? And now what you're reteaching is gonna be a new approach to the same thing, okay? Uh, extension is gonna be building on what was learning and starting to propel them forward, okay? Brother Kyle. Now, I know this might be a redundant question, but is it possible to do this if you can justify it with one student or would that not be worth filming? Hey man, I would stick with the language that CTC put together. And they specifically use this language of the whole class or a group of students. And all of us, we're intellectuals. We know what a group is. One is not a group. And so I would say, stick with the language. If you have one student that didn't do well, then you need to think about maybe doing the whole class. 
either either or you know what i'm saying if they if they meet their priorities is that they met the content specific so if you had one student that did it then it's either whole class or group of students not one student it didn't there's nowhere here that it reads whole class group of students or one student all right and i think we just need to follow the language all right thanks brother kyle thank you Clinton. all right folks why don't we take a just a little do 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 breather um i'm going to you know just have some air time here in case someone wants to ask a question uh, and you know, I don't look at the chat much because I'm too busy, but I'm gonna take a look at the chat. That's great, Brendan. I think me and MT will talk tomorrow about how to make student self-assessment rubric. Look for it next Monday, been doing. Hey, and that's another thing I wanna, I wanna say here. Hey man, there is no law that says you can't share information here. Like I said earlier, we're family. Let's help each other out. If you have something to share, drop it in the chat. Let people grab hold to it or send it to me and say, hey, Quentin, post this on Canvas. And um, anything you can share with your brothers and sisters here, it's a win because we're all trying to climb, climb out of the barrel, you know, together. So if you have anything to share, if you want to send it to me through email and I can drop it on Canvas or drop it in the chat and we can go from there. So it's 627 um, p.m. and I'm ready to go over to page 26 to continue forward with our conversation. How is everyone doing? Do you want to keep moving on? Okay, I'm kind of getting a yes. So I got two people. How come nobody else talks to me? They don't give me the thumbs or anything. You guys don't like me? <laughs> I got, I got this right here, huh? I'm just... uh... Okay, so let's go. I'm gonna read what's in this call out box on page 26. And then I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the page from there and I'll throw in a few little Quintinisms as we go. If both types of instruction are applicable for the whole class or a group of students, select one type and teach to the content specific follow-up activity. You must provide evidence for your decision based on the actual student data collected in step two and three. So what they're, what, what they're saying here, everything you do in this segment is gonna be based on evidence. Evidence from the videos, evidence from the three assessments and evidence from those three students who met, exceeded and you know, all that should be woven into your conversation. Okay, that's the proof, that's the meat, that's the citation, all right? For example, if one learning goal of your instruction assessment was taught during this cycle was met, but another was not met, choose the goal not yet met to reteach the content in a new way to provide additional support and opportunity to learn and opportunities to learn to your students. If your students did demonstrate um, that they met the learning goals, design an activity that would give the students an opportunity to extend beyond the learning goals and deepen or advance their understanding of the content specific learning goals or ELD goals if appropriate. Okay. So 
The learning activity used in step four must be unique to step four and not repeated from the learning segment lesson activities. Yeah, you all know that. Okay. So let's go down to directions, okay? Provide the following information about the content specific follow-up activity using the Part K written narrative. Next steps for learning and reteaching or extension activity description uh, this template provided, okay? So the activity is A, reteaching activity or extension activity. Either one of the two, either or. The activity is for the whole class or it's for, and now they hit it here, small group from the class. So that goes back to, it's not talking about one person from the class, it's a group, a small group. And let me ask you a question. What would you constitute a small group? What number? Uh, maybe four, four to five. Two or more, maybe. Two or more based off of the TPA criteria from earlier. <laughs> and, and you know, I, 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 I feel the same way. Two, three or probably more. three or four is pretty good yeah that, that, that that's a small group okay that that's 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 what i would constitute a small group very good okay um and um i have done here you want a targeted lesson that hits a specific point if the whole class, what point did they miss? This reteaching activity, this extension activity narrows down to a specific thing that was missed. It was something that they didn't get, okay? Something special you noticed in your analysis. As you've gone through things, you can say, oh man, they, they, they didn't understand uh, where how a chicken's shell develops. So you want something very targeted and very specific, okay? That comes from the big lesson, all right? Is everyone with me? Okay. The number, so the number one and two, you know, I, I've said that a billion times, reteaching activity or extension activity. Activity, whole class or small group from the class. Three, content specific learning goals and ELD goals if specific, if, if appropriate. Number four, a brief description of the new learning activity, activities, including use of educational technology as appropriate. Okay, so when they say as appropriate, if it needs to be there, put it there. If it doesn't need to be there, it doesn't have to be there. But as appropriate, make sure you use it. Number five, a rationale for why the choice of this different learning activity will result in assisting students to meet or extend beyond the segments, the segments content specific learning goals and ELD goals if, if appropriate. Cite evidence from your results, analysis of the informal assessment. And man, they keep telling you over and over and over, cite evidence from your results of the informal assessment the student self-assessment and rubric and formal assessment and rubric. They're demanding that you use that, all of that as evidence to support whichever direction you've gone in. 
If you don't do that, you're gonna be putting yourself in jeopardy. And then, uh, you know, uh, uh, I go back to number four, a brief description of the new learning activities. You know, how will your students better understand now? How will they get it now that you've adjusted it? What's gonna make them get it? I've eliminated, you know, this and added this, th therefore, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and number five, like I said, is based on the analysis of everything. Bring everything into the discussion, informal, formal, and student self, and those videos, just bring it all in there. This is the point in this step four where you're bringing everything together and you're having this discussion as to why you're doing the reteach or the extension activity. Don't be shy, okay? And number uh, six reads, checks for understanding of content and academic language, um, purposeful question, observation notes, student peer review and critique. So, you know, just use everything that we've talked about. Um, a point that I'll bring out on this one, what are you doing different to make it possible for your students to get the lesson this time if you do a reteach? How are they gonna get it the second time around, okay? Now, I think I've thrown a lot of information at you. I'm gonna pause and then ask how you're doing, are you okay? Okay. So I can go over to page 27, which is Roman number three, and it reads, teach and video record the follow-up instruction. Or I can stop and um, really just start to, um, um, you know, have some, because I assume there's going to be a lot of discussion tonight. Isn't it? seems like there's going to be a lot of discussion tonight, um, you know, afterwards. So hands up, keep going. Um, do the number three, or do you want to pick that up next week? Yes, no. Next keep, week, I'm going to next week. Keep going, stop. Keep going. I'm going next week. It's like nobody's responding. I find that amazing. I say pick it up next week. <laughs> no, I'm not good with next week as well. Next week is fine. Okay. And so before we do that, I need, I need, I need some, 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 um, maybe I should go to the chat. Maybe that's where you guys are engaging. Okay. Yeah, you are. Look at that. Next week, next week. Keep going, keep going. Okay, cool. <laughs> Hey, so let me, let me ask you a question, and, and I have to do this, you know, it, it does step four make sense to you? Do you, do you understand it? And, and I, I have to have some kind of, somebody, I see a good check, thanks. Thanks, Jackson. You're you're cool, man. Thanks. For I already have a clear idea of what I could possibly do. Okay, so I'm getting some checks and thumbs up. Is, is, are you getting it? Does it make sense to you? I, I have to know this. I, I someone put. I think so. I think for well, for I, me, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry, Nina. <laughs> no, go ahead, Tanya. Okay, so so today I actually tweaked my instruction because I was having timing issues. Uh -huh. I see uh, step 
step four and mostly just cycle two in general mm -hmm. lead into how I'm developing with TPE six in particular. Like today, that's what I focused on with one of my coaching cycle forms because I had a terrible observation two days ago. Okay. And, and I think a part of it is just learning how to tweak it, tweak okay. your instruction based off of the different assessments you do in class, based off of collaborating with your MT and even each other. So I, I think it's very much familiar to what I've been doing in my coaching cycle forms. Okay. So okay. I'm feeling more confident with not only cycle two, but cycle one as well okay. for submitting and retweaking that. That way it can get a three across the board. Okay, very good. And thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. It's, it's good to hear your voice. Anyone else? And, and, I, and, and I'd be remiss. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight if I don't do this. Is, did, did four make sense? Did I go too fast? Are you going like, oh, okay, I see what he's talking about. Do I need to go over this again next week? Anybody? Nina, you, the floor is yours. I think, honestly, this is just speaking for myself, finding out that we have to do yet another video where we already have to do four for mm -hmm. this one is a little overwhelming. And I think this is just speaking for myself, but I think this time is the busiest in the semester. So I'm definitely tired. I show up to my classes half asleep after teaching all day. So this, I, this absolutely makes sense. I think it's, it's not you or the instruction. It's more the... Okay, so we have to do a fifth video where we have to show something and, and trying, I think the difficult part is also that it's very unrealistic to fit all of the stuff that they want to see in a video into five minutes. That's, mm -hmm. not, that's I think, more of the struggle, but I think overall it makes sense and it's okay. clear and good oh. Okay, thank you for your voice, Nina. And, and I'll say, I, I want to validate you and I, and I want you to know I get it. You, you all are, hey man, you, 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 you and that's why I, I want to keep checking in with you to, so you guys don't hate me down the road. But um, hey man, everybody's inundated and tied, but, but we, we don't have a choice. We've got to get this done so we can go on with our careers and have our lives to continue to move forward. Um, and, and I'll do my best to respect you and to try to, you know, think about your feelings and where you are. Um, so I'm trying to do that. But I want you to know, I hear you, Nina. I validate you. And at the end of the day, we're going to have to just get this done. So I'm with you. Christo, talk to me. How are you today? Uh, hi, everyone. Or this, or this evening? Uh, good, good. Thank you, Quentin. Uh, so for me, it's uh, I'm understanding everything. I'm, I'm a big note taker. So just a lot of notes. And I like how you're going really slow and repetitive. Um, but I think it's for me when I haven't started filming. I plan on filming next week for the March 17th deadline. So I don't know if I'm going to be cutting it a, a tad close. No, no, no. no. It's, it's March. It's April for, uh, 14th is, is, our, is our due date. I need to still do TP. Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, go ahead. Um, so March 17th is my deadline and I will start yeah, we I'm filming next that. week. Right. So it's just a little, a little tight for me, but um, it's really clear and laid out. I'm just worried that when it comes to the the layout, like when I'm sitting down by myself and I start doing it, mm -hmm. I don't want to be like, oh my gosh, what, what do I do? Even though like I'm taking really detailed notes and then everything you say, little side notes, I'm like, okay, okay. And I understand what you're saying and what you're talking about, but I'm just worried like when I sit down or, or when I'm filming something, I, I don't want to just film to film. Like I need to make sure that I kind of want to work backwards, plan it, like lay it out and then film at the end. Okay. okay. I don't know if that's a good idea. No, that's a good idea. That, that's, you know, everybody uses these different methods. So um, it's a good idea. It works. Okay. All right. Hey, listen, it is so nice to hear your voice, Crystal. Thank you for sharing. All right, folks. So here we are. I'm going to um, release you from my clutches and um, allow you to, to do you for the rest of the night. I'm really going to just reiterate and ask that you, you make this a priority. We have... 30 days of uh, 30 days here, plan these days out and, um, and get it done. And trust me, when this is off your back, you will be so happy. All right. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you for your support. Thank you for, you know, putting up with me. Um, 
and I'll, I'll hang around and I'm going to, uh, I'm good. I'm good. And I'm going to ask, I'm going to hang around and I'm going to engage, but I'm going to ask you to uh, keep it S and W short and sweet. All right. So I'm going to go on and, and uh, say buena note to, to totals. And then um, I'll, I'll be here. All right. So thank you. Thank you all. I really appreciate you. And